So I got this beautiful three-piece artwork set for uh, for Christmas. And it's supposed to be where you put it up on the wall and it gives a nice panoramic image, which it's great. But I've got a, a larger empty space where it's going to hang on the wall. And I've already hung it up as is. And it looks like, hey, there's three pictures right there. It doesn't really look like they all flow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to frame the entire, all three of these out with some divider strips in between. And I'm going to case it with some molding. Uh, left, right, and top like a window frame and then put a window sill down at the bottom and a nice piece of molding underneath. Uh, that way it gives the impression of, hey, you're looking through this window and you see this beautiful scene outside. Kind of draw attention and tie it all together as opposed to three individual pieces. It'll all look like one. Um, that's the game plan anyway. The material that I'm going to use for the frame of the frame is some 2 by dimensional pine. This is a scrap piece of 2 by 10 that I have laying around. Uh, I only need one long piece for the top because the bottoms, the bottom of the vertical pieces are going to be screwed into the window sill. So I just need one piece that's about 54 inches long, and this just happens to be the only piece of scrap that I have that's long enough. So I'm going to go ahead and use it, just get one piece ripped out of this, and use the rest of that stuff over there for the rest of the vertical pieces. time to cut all, th all four of my vertical pieces the exact same length. And to do so, I'm going to use a stop lock on my miter saw station. Um, set the distance at 15 and 3 quarter. And then I'm just going to use the scrap cutoff we just cut from the horizontal piece. Clamp it down. Now I can get four, four repeatable cuts for my vertical pieces. I said the distance wrong earlier. Uh, I said it was 17 and, uh, 17 and a quarter. Uh, I took into consideration the top thickness, the thickness of the top horizontal piece, but I'm not going to use a half lap joint like I originally thought. I'm just going to go ahead and pocket hole screw this whole thing. So my vertical distance is 15 and 3 quarter, which is the same measurement of my frames. So here's the initial setup. Uh, I've got my three picture frame or picture slots, and these vertical pieces are going to be secured into the top with pocket hole screws, and also the bottom with pocket hole screws. I because this isn't going to be having because this is not going to have that much stress on it. I'm just going to use the inch and a quarter pocket hole screws throughout the entire setup here. Um, two by material into two by material, it's better to use the two and a half inch screws, but this is not going to have any type of uh, uh, of, of stress onto this onto this whole setup other than wood movement. That's not that big of a deal. And also, I'm going to come back with some molding that's going to tie everything in all the way around. Uh, but basically, I'm going to have a piece of one by down here, so I don't want to use the, the longer screws. Keeping things simple, inch and a quarter screws, top and bottom, all, three, all four of these vertical pieces. Just about everything in my shop is on wheels, so I can move it around. Uh, and, and dust is obviously a big problem in my shop, like always. So I like to keep the floor swept up often and into one pile. When it's big enough, I'll pick it up. But I don't like to be walking around on sawdust because that's slippery and I don't want to uh, cause any stupid injuries over dumb stuff. So what I like to do, if I'm working on something that's going to create sawdust that is movable, like this stand is right here, um, I'm going to be drilling uh, a lot of holes real quick. So just wheel my cart right next to my saw or sawdust pile, and I can drill all my holes, and the sawdust will be right next to the pile. Just won't have to sweep it up at all.
got this first corner screwed in. I'm working from the back side and this is the top. I've got all my pieces drilled out. And to get the exact spacing that I want, I'm just going to take one of these pictures and slot it in place like so. And then with a real snug fit, I'm just going to screw it in. All right, I've got it flipped back. So I'm looking at the back side, and that is the top. I went ahead and used some scrap because none of this is going to show. So just about all these vertical pieces have some some type of marking. This is where I used a used this piece of wood as a backer when I was using my circular saw. But anyway, I got them all spaced out, referenced from that corner, so that side is nice and flush. Uh, some of these are not exactly perpendicular to uh, to the top rail mainly because I didn't really take my time making sure my miter saw was back to 100% square and I don't care. Uh, this is all going to be covered up and it'll be alright. Uh, when I put this this bottom piece, this is going to be the uh, window sill. it's going to be flush with this plane and it's going to extend down about three inches, three and a half inches. I think I'm going to measure this one just as a little bit of a reference uh, just and just see what looks right. Uh, this is the back side, like I said, the window sill is going to come down here. And when I go to secure these in place, I'm going to put all three picture frames where they need to be. That way everything squares it up nice and neat. And uh, even if it's not square, the picture frames fit. Because I know, and I'm using them as, the part, as part of the assembly process. So I lucked up and I found a piece of 2.5 inch uh, primed MDF ready to go. I just trimmed it to length so it overhangs about an inch and a half on both sides. I'm going to use that as like the windowsill. But in order for me to attach that, I need to know that these vertical pieces are exactly, exactly where they should be. And to do that, I'm just going to slide my pictures in. Like I said, this is the back side up, by the way. Slide these pictures in where they need to be. And then I can, with the help of some clamps, I can set this in place. I've already marked out where it needs to be. So this might be a little tricky to get started. Uh, with it all adjusted and clamped out where it needs to be, I'm going to take my pocket hole screws, my inch and a quarter, and just fill these up and screw them down. So here it is roughed out a little bit. You can start to see it take shape. Uh, the pictures are just sitting in there. But uh, starting to take shape, like I said, I left a little bit more of an overhang than what, I th than what looks all right, but the, the trim that I'm going to put next to it is going to take up some of that overhang space. And also I'm going to put a vertical piece underneath it, just like a traditional windowsill. In order for me to add this, this vertical piece down here, I want it to be flush lengthwise with the trim that's going to come up over here. So to do so, obviously we need to cut the trim first. And what I did all the way around is I came in a quarter of an inch and I marked my location quarter inch all the way around as an inset. And that is because if you notice most of your doors in your home, should all be that way anyway, are offset from the frame itself, from the inside casing. And that is so you don't, and it's going to be difficult to get these perfectly lined up all the way across, and any door rather. So they offset them a little bit, and that'll be cut like so. And my measurement, get out of the light, my measurement is where they intersect. So that's where I need to make a 45 degree angle going away. It's at that location, and to do so, I'm going to use my 45 degree sled on the table saw. With my vertical pieces cut to length, uh, according to my crosshairs here, I can smear some glue on the contact portion where the two pieces will meet and just tack it in place with my 23 gauge, 23 gauge pin nailer. 
I'm using my pin nailer here as opposed to a brad nailer because this is recycled molding. This is leftover uh, removed molding that was already used from a remodel. And it's already filled with staple holes and whatnot that I'm going to come back and caulk like you would a normal window. Uh, but, you know, my pin nailer will hold it in place just fine. What's really going to hold it is the wood glue.